Hello, hello. How's everybody doing out there? Wow, we had almost 100 people waiting. I think that's the first time I've seen almost 100 people waiting on a Tuesday show. I apologize for my voice. I've been sneezing all day, a little bit under the weather, but that does not stop me from giving you entertainment news and a little bit of inter um, just talking shit as to what's happening with the automotive uh, race, performance race, and aftermarket. Today, we're going to talk about the Charger being released by Dodge. And I know a lot of you guys think that the electric stuff is gay, and I would agree with you in that um, layout. I'll talk about that layout. But what does kind of excite me is that Dodge is doing something with the Charger that Ford should have done with the Mustang. How many times did you hear me talk about the fact that the Ford Mustang should be all-wheel drive? How many times did you, talk, did you hear me talk about the fact that the Ford Mustang should be twin turbo? Now, they're never going to offer you a twin turbo V8 Mustang. That would be ridiculous. But a variant thereof, they give you a gay ass EcoBoost piece of junk. They give you a GT in 17 different variants of a GT Mach 1, Boss, 350, blah, 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 blah. And then a GT500 or future Cobra is what they're potentially going to put out there. But why didn't they give you an all wheel drive option turbo car? Dodge is giving you two versions of EV two versions of ICE vehicles, straight six, hurricane, twin turbo, all wheel drive. Guys, listen to those words. A hurricane engine that pumps out 520 horsepower in an all wheel drive platform, twin turbo. Once tuning is opened up, it is going to be serious because Dodge has a great, uh, let's just say, history of having robust transmissions behind their drivetrains in charger challenger form not the dodge truck stuff but we'll talk about that we're also going to talk about a video that i saw that the dude in blue put out there about vmp's 24 gt mustang and eagle-eyed viewers spotted something that i wanted to talk about today but we'll get up to all that not before mr bill o'reilly says hello to the people here okay. we'll do it live okay no. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! Right. Fucking thing sucks! It does suck. It always sucks. What are you gonna do? p -Mask. Nick James the p -Mask. Get that cold air coming for my 13 GT. I released a video today on a little bit of a health and wellness check. Check out p -Mask for all their pods, fender well intake, sensors. Now they're releasing stock style, stock style filters. For phone stock holder intakes that are race style. Badass shit, DNA Performance! DNA Performance.com, they're, they're, they're gonna be releasing a tumbler cup with a YDBT Amory. Check them out. Check them out DNA Performance for parts, whipple, parts, injectors, tires, wheels, you name it. Part farm, part farm.com, jacked up cars, uh, crash shit, a sl slideshow um, victim. Check them out there for parts, rolling chassis, engine pullouts, because I don't. Part farm.com. Two auto solution Rami Zanatoros. So you already had a couple of tubes today. Nice to see him alive. Thank you for being around, Mr. Rami Zaidana, two auto solution. Calumet Transmission, CalumetTransmission.com. Getting the 3160 game unlocked. He's gonna get into the 10R80 and 6R80 game too. Bellax! The freaking notchback looks ridiculous on 15-inch Bellax. I'll get a video up this weekend sometime. And finally, my voice is gone. MFP of Australia, MFP Main Force Performance, Matt Coates owed $315,000 by US suppliers and parts companies, and they're never gonna pay them because they're cucks like that. Shit, I never got the uh, URL for the live chat so that I can show you pretty little stupid handles on the thing, and then we can say hi to the people here, and then give me about 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll talk whatever you wanna talk about. DRAW Fox, T. Sikorsky, Rad Dad, Leon Phelps, Clean 92 gt HT Bison, Monty 540, Anthony, Joe Swish, Paul Pontiu, Monkey Mock, JD Swag, Bryson Witt, Victor Sardone, B. Lavesh, Gallo Bravo, Michael Loreno, Josh Roy, Joe Jackson, Kim Phillips, K2AZ, Aggressively Average, Corn Fred Cow, Monty, Travis, 2JZ, Foxbody. Let's go, Brandon says, good evening, Insane Mustang, Douche Did It, Devin Marth, Devin Marth again, Tango, Any Black Betty, Craig Walls, I got your email. You don't want this notch. I love you. This notch is not for you. You have nice things. This isn't a rat. It's just, I love you. It's just not for you. It's, trust me. Victor Sardone, Angel Puerto Rico, Stewart, 101 RTR, Madi, Dalton Dale, GT Mustang, Madi again, Abel Rios, Devin Marth again. 
One of our RTR, Ray Ray, EPA, Rocco Zioli, Stuart D, Izzy R, Gray Mustang, Mendoza Coyote, aggressively average, Smokin' ZX14, Bondo Bird, Christian Duran, Gray Mustang, Christian Duran again, SK Productions, Carters TV, Christian Duran again, Leadfoot, JD, Clint, Cornfed, Gregory Upvich, Walter Hoffman, Matt Oliver. Let's get all the way to the bottom so everyone can uh, get on game. Mind if I 40, the youthful alpaca, Grand F the Gap Father, Mr. Prime, Indian Outlaw, Kakino Horsepower, Jamie's Garage, Smoking, Grandpa's Air Kill, Timmy T, Jared Wells, Empyrean, Friend Zoning, Rich, Bilby, Matthew, Tony Dominguez. Let's get to the main story that dropped today on MotorTrend.com. Dodge Charger Daytona is an EV car with up to 670 horsepower. Dropped today at March 5th, 2024. Swapping Hemi V8s for... Wait, wait. wait. Swapping... Oh. Where is it? Hello. Oh, come on. Where's hell? It's dropping hell, Captain Trackhawk. V8s for a 400 volt system. New electric charger has standard all wheel drive. Standard all wheel drive. 300 miles of estimated range plus drift and donut modes. Oh, that'll be good for the slideshow. Slide with the Black Air Force Water Ones. Bow, 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 bow. Okay. The 24. Okay, just because Ford slapped the Mustang logo on the electric vehicle doesn't mean that it. It's first EV muscle car. Let's get to the meat of it. Let's cut the bullshit. Performance charger. Um, da, 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 da. The electric chargers will be notably quicker than their predecessors too. Dodge claims the Daytona RT will be 60, 0 to 60, 4.7 seconds, and the Scat Pack model will do it in 3.3 seconds. At the drag strip, Dodge claims the Duo will compete 13-1. Boy! Well, actually, it runs exactly what they fucking run with a, with a regular ice engine. And 11.5, respectively, for the scat pack. So 13.1 for the bitch ass, 11.5 for the slide job. Hell, Captain track and Dodge claims the dual, uh, a 19 Dodge Charger scat pack. We tested 60, 0 to 60 to 3.8 and finished a quarter in 12.2 at 115. So there you go. Scat packs that are gas shit are junk as shit and they were never good. I like to fuck them in the ass while he and so the electric version will be quicker than them. The EV's top speed is the only letdown, as the RT is limited to 137, wah, wah, and the Scat Pack is capped at 134 miles an hour. So, Scat Pack, 11.5, uh, Charger, RT, whatever the fuck, Daytona RT, Charger, it'll be like an, a 13.1 car. All-wheel drive, 270 or 260 range for the Scat Pack, 300 or so for the RT, blah, 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 but... 2025 Dodge Charger 6-pack sports a 550 twin turbo, 550 horsepower twin turbo inline 6. The gas-powered version of Dodge's latest Charger offers two and four-door flavors and the Hurricane's 3.0-liter inline 6, both standard and high-output tunes. Dude, a twin turbo, straight 6, all-wheel drive. You don't think that's going to be fun? You don't think tuners are going to be chomping at the bit to get after that? You don't think that's going to be a decent street player once the tuning is opened up? Because knowing Dodge, they're not going to pull a Ford. They're probably not going to pull a Ford and say, well, it's locked forever. They're probably going to let some shit bleed in the market and say, hey, here you go. You got to switch this. You got to put your thumb up your ass and then you'll be able to get everything going. So let's look at the output. Uh, the Charger 6-pack should feature a similar cabin. Da -da -da, Charger 6 bumper. Who gives a fuck about the bumper? Okay. So the Charger 6-pack gas power variant will be known, will offer two versions of the Hurricane Twin Turbo 3-liter inline 6 that has already appeared in the Jeep Wagoneer and the Wagoneer and the Grand Wagoneer, as well as the refreshed 2025 Ram 1500. The motor comes with two power outputs. The Charger 6-pack SO for standard output produces 420 in its SUV and truck cousins. The Charger 6-pack HL for high output is beefed up for muscle car duty. While the Wagoneer produces 510 horsepower and the Ram makes 540 in top form, the Charger's oomph is boosted all the way to 550. Dodge has yet to reveal torque figures for the gas engines, but the Rams Hurricane engine pumps about 469 pound-feet in standard output uh, guys and 521 pound-feet. So 550, 520. Dude! The Charger 6-pack comes standard with all-wheel drive. Again, the Charger 6-pack comes standard with all-wheel drive. You understand what that means, guys? This is going to be a problem on the street once tuning opens up. Think BMW. BMW's uh, power output is lackluster when it comes to stock stuff. But opened up, it's pretty serious. E50, E40, whatever the fuck you want to do, and a little bit of German or Russian unlocking of the computer, the, the cars seem to live in the, I don't know, mid-10, low-10, high-9 zone with relative ease, downpipes, and a couple of things. So you don't think this Dodge unit with 
a better history of having better transmissions than the uh, BMWs do, that it'll actually hold up with some of the abuse. The lack of V8 options is sure to upset some Dodge diehards, and the automaker is keen to point out that the standard output produces more horsepower and torque than the 5.7 liter in the outgoing RT, while the high output motor outdoes the old Scat Pack 6.4 liter V8. Guys, I've always said that the Mustang should have a twin turbo all wheel drive option. You have to have that. Nowadays, street racing is still hot. BMWs are relevant because of the all wheel drive system. On the track, they're finally starting to prove their worth and some have been well into the eights with a pure driving solutions transmission, good tuning, ethanol, port injection, you name it. This Dodge already comes with what? A whole nother 100 horse. How heavy is it gonna be? It looks big. It looks heavy. It looks like it's going to be a problem. It looks like it's going to be 4,200 pounds. That's going to be the downfall. But let's talk about street racing. Most of the races you see are eighth mile races. That's all. They're eighth mile. You don't think a heavy car with all wheel drive, 500 plus pound feet of torque can actually perform really well on the street? Because that's where you're going to do most of your racing light to light racing just like i talked about the mustang mach -E, the mustang mach -E, light to light will be a lot of cars but not necessarily to the quarter not necessarily on a roll to 130 but light to light it's going to be a problem if dodge rolls this out properly i think that they're going to end up based on their previous guys they came up with the with the 170 demon they had the Hellcats running stupid numbers. They had the Demon, the Demon 170. They had uh, red eye, wide body stuff. And then with aftermarket tuning, people like in Houston and, and down here and Vander, a bunch of people tuning it, were able to make them nine second, eight second cars with relative ease. So once they get their hands on this twin turbo, Hurricane high output motor, I suspect cars are going to be in the tens and nines pretty fast if they do the smart thing and leave the computer unlocked let people poke around in there we'll see what kind of fuel injection it has if it has direct injection uh-oh but if it has hey who knows here on the chat 530 people who knows if the hurricane variants in the wagoneer the grand wagoneer and the ram are they port are they direct or are they a mix of both because that's going to determine how billy badass you can make them right off the rip so in my opinion if it's port and direct it's an id 1700 e85 fuel pump upgrade away from being nasty and supposedly dodge is opening up their in-house tune shop so you can basically modify the vehicle internally so you don't have to do aftermarket solutions but fuck all that the aftermarket is gonna make it pretty bad so twin turbo straight six high output all-wheel drive that's what we all want that's what the Mustang should have been. But no, Ford gave you an S550. They gave you tablets on the dash. They gave you cars that catalytic converters fail. NA, that's right, NA, catalytic converters fail if you'll romp on it a lot. I've seen PO4 2430 codes in two or three year old cars. I think the, the latest batch of cats are just made out of a shitty material or shittier and shittier materials and they just don't last as long anymore. That's why I'm not a fan of boosting a new car with stock cats that fail stock. So if you're a guy that's gonna potentially get a 24 Mustang and you shove a Whipple on it, be careful because one day you're gonna go, hmm, what's that smell? Sassel, man, Sassel. Speaking of what's that smell, Sassel. A lot of you guys watch The Dude in Blue. I don't, because I'm a straight male. But he did have a video where he reviewed VMP's 24 Mustang, and he drove it. Now, guys, people that really pay attention to racing love mechanical things, and you see things happening that are abnormal or anomalies. You know when a car is not happy, right? If you see a car going down the track and you see puffs of smoke coming out of the exhaust, inconsistent puffs of smoke, that's a bad that's a bad combustion event. And I don't even know how to say that in more simple terms. A, an anomaly and a, a bad combustion event, meaning detonation, meaning misfire, meaning pl spark plug blowout, it, it shows up on a car by puffing at the back. 
So if you watch a top fuel dragster go down the track, and when a cylinder goes out, raw fuel comes out that 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 pipe. Even though there's zoomies, but that raw fuel comes out that pipe. He's down a cylinder. The car steers to that side for because of inertia, and it doesn't run the number it's supposed to. So if you guys go look at the dude in blue's most recent video titled "Building a Nine Second Twenty Four Mustang GT in One Day," at the six minute and twenty seven second mark, the dude in blue goes wide open throttle. I want you to look at the tailpipes. That is so badass. Did you see it? Let's uh let's enhance. Right there. Did you see it? Let's enhance again. That is so badass. Let me enhance there it is. Bam. Right there. See that puff? That puff is a anomaly. That puff is a bad combustion event. And you'll see it. Oh, what is this? I think the TV turned on over there. Hold on for a second. I think the TV turned on. <laughs> the Alexa started talking. Anyway, so if you see right there, and if you play it through a little further, you'll see that it... Be, it, like right on the shift, it does it again. Right. There, puffs out again. So I'll play it through and I'll shut the fuck up. Now, for those of us that understand how internal combustion engines work, this is a bad. This is a bad combustion event. It's literally a bad combustion event. So. What does that tell me? It's not happy. The combustion event, there is an anomaly happening. There could be, someone says, you could slow down the video and, and really soak it in. Okay, let's do that. Because we're gonna enhance on this show because again, I told you guys that 93 octane and 12 pounds of boost is so freaking stupid. So settings, playback speed, ah, 0.5? Okay, let's do 0.5 playback speed, let's see. Oh my lord, this is so good. Guys, look at this. Dude. Go ahead. Go ahead. Put a Whipple on your pump gas car with catalytic converters. Go ahead. Go ahead and then go ahead and say, tell my fucking boss that I'm talking shit on your fucking product. When I'm trying to protect the people of grenading their shit. Go ahead. Say that I'm talking shit. Go ahead. Say that I'm being a fucking asshole. If by telling you guys do not run a 12 PSI car on pump gas and stock exhaust. Hell, even aftermarket exhaust. That's why they're lying to you. They're lying to you about everything. They're lying to you about the octane they're using. This is 100% a bad combustion event. So you need to take care of your shit and stop believing what you see on the internet. Because I don't know how long those cats are going to last. If, they, if I don't know how long those cats are going to last if they keep having bad detonation anomalous events happening. So please, 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 before you go out there and say that I'm a piece of shit and I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, all you have to do is have a little bit of common sense and understand the reason I say these things is to protect the consumer because you're not as a parts company or as a tuner or as a whatever. If your tuner is slamming 0.74 lambda 20 degrees on 10 PSI and pump gas, he is trying to get the internet fame and he is not looking out for your motor. That's why I tell today alone, I had about 10 guys that logged, logged, and logged, and they were just like, hey, I don't understand. My car is not, you know, uh, uh, pulling the way it should be pulling. And I'm like, do you have pump gas in it? Look at the knock sensor. You need, you need octane. And I've, I convinced a couple of guys with ESS kits and Whipple kits to just pony up the money if there's E85 in your area and run E85. So you need to, you need to understand what's happening. When you see a bad combustion event, look on the dyno. Look at every dyno pull. Look at the back of the car, what, what it's doing. Forget the tires. You guys stare at the tires. You guys try to see the fender separating. I'm staring at that exhaust. And I'm going, ah, 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 nope, fuck that. 
This thing is within an inch of its life. It can let go at any moment. Damage is occurring. No, thank you. Um, good. Red Dad says, Alex, your smoke signals were red before I even took delivery of my Ford Whipple F-150. And he never mentioned Octane Booster in the video. Some people in the comments were telling him to be transparent. Well, I don't know what that car had. So I can't tell the dude in blue. Okay. The dude in blue. Mm, let, let, let's, let's be serious. Let's be serious. Um, the reason I have credibility and people that hate me, like they hate me because I'm telling the truth. Like imagine that. Imagine disliking me because I'm telling the truth. Mind blown about that situation. Call me all the names you want, but you can't. One thing you cannot call me is a liar. So all these people that are out there saying Alex sucks, that's what we're talking about. Tell me what I've said that's wrong. The dude in blue is an entertainer. The dude in blue is a car reviewer. His job is not to, his job is not to get gotcha and aha moments. But that's the problem. If you're going to be an automotive journalist, is VMP paying you to make a favorable video? Is VMP saying, hey, don't mention anything negative. Let's, let's sell this product. Or, hey, we'll let you borrow the car for a week. Do whatever you want and you can get content for your channel. So you're not, you're not going to go on the, on your channel and say, thanks for VMP uh, letting me borrow this car. Uh, it did detonate. I checked the plugs. They were all fucked up. You know, no, it, it, it's a positive sell. That's why I think I don't want to review cars. A lot of people like, Alex, you should review cars. I'm almost going to find a negative with every car I drive. And you guys don't want to hear that. Like the good thing about places like Throttle House and stuff like that is they don't get their cars from the manufacturer. They get it from the dealership or something. So they can at least be a little transparent with their reviewing. But the dude in blue needs access. The dude in blue is not going to say, well, they had Octane Booster, so they're totally lying about their records. So again, if you go out there believing that VMP is running on 93 Octane after seeing those puffs of smoke come out the back, I, I can't help you. I literally can't help you. Thanks for the reply yesterday. You got it, Yonick or Yonick. All of them are going to look at like RX-7s with the whole back bumper being black. I like the idea of the 85 and it's all over in Minnesota, but only 500 to 1,000 miles on a car a year. Won't that shit go bad sitting in the tank that long? Nelson, drive it every weekend. Nelson, drive it every weekend. And in Minnesota, when it gets cold, which is what, October, put pump gas in it. Drive it for a weekend on pump gas. Now you have pump gas in the system. It's not going to go bad. Put some stabilizer stuff. And then when it comes out in the springtime, drive it gingerly. Get fresh 93 in there. Once you want to turn it up when it gets warm out, boom, put some E85. That's not a problem. The dude in blue is a car enthusiast who loves to drive. He doesn't know what you know. And see, I don't want to. There's no way I can say this without sounding like I'm um, like pompous. But I know too much. And the people that don't know as much as I typically tend to not believe what I say. Look, three or four years ago, the, the real real OGs of the channel, you remember me saying, Ford needs to come out with an all-wheel drive twin turbo Mustang, right? I've been saying that since the beginning of time, and I said I would buy it immediately. If Ford Mustang was an all-wheel drive 3.5 port and direct injected Raptor spec V6, I'd buy it. I can make that thing a nine-second car with tuning down pipes. And E E50, if I wanted to do gay shit, or I just upgrade the port side, and a fuel pump, and I could end up making I don't know close to 700 or 800, depending on how strong the bottom end is. Oh, you're so stupid! You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Then Ford comes out with a exact same car S650, same as the S550, and then they talk about how oh it's the last of the V8s, and you guys are raw rawing that shit, and then Dodge goes. We're just going to go ahead of, the, ahead of the curve, give you the same body with four different choices of motor, two electrics, standard and high, two gas, standard and high. What happens if there is another EV push? What happens if there's another wave of EV bullshit? Because the wave crested, came down, but just like Bitcoin, it can come right back. So Dodge was like, let's just get ahead of it. The V8's dying on this platform because it's too big, too much of a gas guzzler tax, and I don't see gas getting any cheaper. Okay, cool. Let's get into the all-wheel drive standard, low output uh, electric, high output electric, low output, standard output, straight six. 
before you start saying straight six straight sixes are gay. Two J, Barra, uh, the GTR pre R thirty four shit. Um, what else has a straight six? The, the BMW, all of them, tunable, making good power, modern muscle, Mustang, untunable twenty four. Whipple is the only one that can tune it. Because they got the Kiss of Ford and Badillo somehow being able to work on the side. And now a Carb EO kit that they're advertising as 800 horsepower with catalytic converters. That will melt. Alex is an asshole. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Okay. Okay. It's all good. Just wait. All you got to do is wait. I hate when people call the Mach -E a Mustang. I have a Mach -E GT. I'll be honest, Dang, but at the revealing ruined the S650 for me, it was the beginning of the end. Same here. Because that guy looks like he's sticky. <laughs> How much does the new charger weigh? It does not say. Pre-35, sorry. Pre-35. I don't know shit about GTRs, bro. Um, i6 is a pretty robust. Packaging is just a pain in the ass. Better than a V6, so already beats the EcoBoost. Inline engines have the torque. Ford 300 straight six from back in the day. Shut up. Come on, stop it. My only beef with all six-cylinder motors is that they sound like absolute trash no matter what you do to the exhaust. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, I have it playing really low. I, I'm so stupid. I, I never moved up the uh, the speed. It does kind of sound gay, to be honest with you. <laughs> this video is gay as fuck. I thought it was going to be cool. Like, I want to hear 2J at full song. I don't think those sound bad. I don't think they sound good. But I don't think they sound bad. A 2JZ sounds good at, at high, you know, when you're at the line and that sucker releases the trans brake or dumps the clutch. It sounds pretty violent. So straight sixes sound pretty good. V6s sound like shit. Look at the R35 uh, GTR. Sounds like four trumpets out the bitch. But you respect it because of the power output. You don't respect it because of the sound. Like, I've, I've seen many cars that sound great. And the other thing about this car, okay, you, you know, you want to you wanna get me fucked up. So... All right, look. So you Take a listen. Okay. Okay, I know what a Mustang sounds like. I know exactly what a Mustang sounds like. The, listen, to, is this a stock exhaust sound? Yes. When was the last time you heard a stock exhaust Mustang sound like this? This is that Whipple 24. I don't know. It sounds a little, I don't know, aggressive. So I go, ah, okay. Titan Real Street have the Mark IV Supras. You can watch Granis pass. Exactly. Let's watch a Granis, Granis Racing Supra. It's a straight six, and again, it's an extreme straight six, okay? It's not, it's nothing to sneeze at, but if you want to hear, you know, what you say are straight sixes sound like shit. You know, the problem with that is all I hear is the Corvette. <laughs> you know, all these videos suck. Like, it says 2JZ track pass, and all you hear is an LS screaming down the track. It's just like the gayest shit ever. Um, so anyway, whatever. That's a stock active unit. Honestly, stoked for the new Charger. The platform could have a lot of potential. And that's what I'm saying. I know you're going to hate it because it's a Dodge. It's a Pookie Mobile. They're going to slide on the ops. And they're going to have Black Air Force Wants. They're going to be playing Hellcat. Hellcat and track -hole. I get it. But think about it as an enthusiast thing. Think about it as, I want to buy an American all-wheel drive coupe. That is twin turbo, period. Listen to those words. American made, twin turbo, over 500 horse, over 500 torque, all wheel drive. Like that shit's unheard of, USA stuff, right? No Camaro, no Corvette, no nothing has ever been all wheel drive, ever. No Mustang has ever been all wheel drive from the factory, ever. 
So Dodge goes, fuck it. We'll give you nothing but all-wheel drive in electric and ICE variants. So you, if you're an American car guy, and if you're an American car, let's say, collector, you want that hurricane high-output twin-turbo car in your garage, regardless of what anyone says, because all this shit they talk, once they get in it and feel the grip, the pull, the torque, and if it becomes tunable and it has port injection, someone needs to uh, find out if they have port injection. Let me look at let me look at Hurricane Dodge Hurricane layout. Is there any Dodge text here? Here we go. Let me see if it has port injection. Okay, this is a Ram truck commercial, so we'll see if they show anything here uh, that tells me that it is um, port injection. The new inline six twin turbo hurricane engines in our truck lineup going forward, both in the standard output and the high output. The high output puts out 540 horsepower and 520 pound-feet of torque. Look, I love the 5.7 Hemi, but this puts out 145 more horsepower and 110 more pound-feet of torque than that engine that we love. This is the next evolution of ICE technology. You see, guys? Imagine it was, it was, um, what's his face? Uh, Farley saying stuff like that about Mustang. The firing order, number of main bearings, the crank design. Oh, hold on. Ah, can I? Let me see. Injectors. Ah, come on, dude. I don't know. I don't see a high pressure fuel pump. That's a turbo. Guys, this bitch might be. Uh, is that a high pressure fuel pump right there? Ah, fuck. It all works together. Ah, uh, uh, I'm trying to. To deliver better MV. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, the, uh, maybe. Ah, fuck. I wish I knew if it had port. H, lower friction and greater efficiency. Thank you for the, thank you for the cutaway. Fuck, YouTube's amazing. Oh yeah, and more power per liter. This is the most power dense package we've ever offered. More power per liter than even the supercharged alcohol injected heavy powered Demon 170, with better fuel economy. And okay, better fuel economy probably means direct injection. Incredible torque on demand that inline designs are known for. Dude, twin turbo, twin turbo, straight six. It's not a loser. I'm telling you, wait until it starts hitting the streets. You guys are going to think differently, in my opinion. Uh, all it needs is a seat. It's port only. It's port only. Oh, it's ahead of it's ahead of BMW. It's ahead of BMW because BMW is direct. And then you have to add an aftermarket port injection uh, port injection to have it make... Now someone says it's DI only. What the fuck? Make up your minds. Leon Phelps says it's port only. Leon Phelps now says it's DI only. Fuck you. <laughs> it has... The HO has two fuel pumps. So the HO uses two fuel pumps for their higher horsepower. Standard version uses single fuel pump with higher pressure base. You can zoom in onto the video... Uh, hey Alex, uh, did you see the video FF? Did you see THC? Did you see THC? What the fuck is THC? Um, uh, what is what the drive chain loss on an all-wheel drive vehicle? I'm not excited about it if it weighs 5,500 pounds. Again, Mr. Prime. Let's say you're on the street. You're racing a 3,200 pound BMW that makes 350 horsepower. You have a 5,500 uh weight. Let's say 5,500 pound, 500 horse. Which one will probably grip more? Now, the BMW, depending on how it's set up, might launch pretty good, but the heavier one on the street where traction is limited might be right with there with a very light, lower output BMW that has all-wheel drive versus your heavier, more comfortable, generally. But it's all about how much grip you can get out of it. Thank you, J-Mark, for the $20 super chat. Jacob Mitchell says, I'm going to go to the track... Uh, uh, on the 8th, and I'm going to send you a video of an 11.6 pass. I'm like, shut the fuck up. This is fucking, fucking clown shit. Clown shit. Clown shit. 11.6 on a stock Mustang. When they've all gone 12s. 12 0, 12 3 is the norm. Somehow he has the factory free. Damn, over 500 horsepower and 500 torque? Gee, yeah, exactly. You're So, after seeing that, it made me go, that's a winner. We'll see what happens when they hit the streets. The Ram, I think, is going to come out first, and you'll start seeing those hit the streets. The Wagoneer already has that motor, and according to everyone I know that has driven it, it's pretty peppy in a big, stupid package. 
I can't wait till tuning gets opened up. It shows up in a coop, and I think it'll be a winner on the street. Not a damn thing, says Mr. Jimmy Jam. Gave me 20 bucks and said not a damn thing, my favorite type of comment. That racing channel, he said THC. Yes, that engine breakdown video was awesome. I'll wait till the people turn up the boost and see what shakes loose. Um, it's only gay until people and grand, until P-Pop and the grandkids on the way back from ice cream gap your S650 from a stoplight. Rad Dad says, it's only gay. Okay, Rad Dad says, I could see them running dual 95 pumps and 85 and bumping the base pressure up and adding boost and timing, getting to the 700 horsepower part, wheel horsepower on stock parts. Damn, this dude with the S650 again, bro. Every single one has gone 12 3. The ones that have gone 11s have a K member. They have weight reduction. They have a drive shaft. They have lightweight everything wheels, tires, brakes, you name it. Everything light and no interior. Yes, an S650 can go 11 6. Not bone stock. Stock weight, stock mods, stock resonator, no fucking way. Every single one. What do you think I do for a living? What do you think I've seen? How many time slips do you think I've seen on S650 Mustangs? Do so you think I'm going to believe the one that's a second quicker than all the others? Come on, shut the fuck up. Um, co company engineers say that there is room for a particulate filter, but it will not be equipped unless it is required. Understand this, guys. Particulate gas GPFs are coming to the USA. And that you can stamp is the end of tuning. Stamp that shit. Boom. See ya. One, it's not necessary. Gasoline particulate filters are not necessary with today's technology. Not even close. People are out there showing you that they're removing cats. So they're, you know, kind of like whatever. Because Ford allowed Mustangs and modern vehicles that when you remove the catalytic converter, it still runs and drives fine. So Ford is defeating emissions. But once you put a, a gas particulate filter in with regen and all this dumb shit that they're going to require for you to, for you to have, if you remove that, the car will go into a fail-safe, just like diesel trucks. And the only way from preventing those from going into a fail-safe is if you go into the programming and you delete all the DPF fail-safes. That is literally tampering. That is what is literally landing diesel shop owners in jail and levying huge fines against them. The moment gasoline particulate filters show up on passenger cars, rubber stamp it, Tuning for those vehicles will never happen. There, guys, there are gas particulate filters in the UK. We don't fucking touch them. Bye bye. Hey, I got a car in uh, UK, and I'm gonna do a deep uh, a GPF delete. Bye. Is it a Gen Two? Yep. Okay, cool. No, no, no gas particulate filter. Cool. Here you go. Oh, I got a brand new Mustang, 2023, 2022, 21. It's got a GPF. Bye. Ain't fucking with it. We're not going to be the ones. Fuck all that. Jimmy Jam says, love the video today about the catch can. Been catching up on some videos on the channel. Excited to see where the S197 build goes. So let's talk about that a little bit. A lot of people have been hitting me up about this S197 and they have theories that it was hit. It was flooded. All this stuff. To be honest with you guys, this thing sat probably under a tree or in a garage for a while. It has that musty smell. No, not a flooded smell because you would think it had electrical gremlins all over the place if it was a flood car. Everyone is talking about the fact that the front bumper is a little shading different than the metal parts that are on the, uh, you know, the, 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 the hood, the uh, fender. And I'm like, okay, so paint on plastic shades differently than paint on metal. Got it. And I did say in the video, the first video, that it had a, a bra. You could see the outline of a car bra on this car. So the front end was technically protected. So I understand there's a lot of people out there that want to be right, but they're also Debbie Downer. Like, I'm blown away when my comments are like, love the car, love the channel. I think it was hit and it was in a flood. What do you get from saying that? Do you get off on maybe make, trying to make me feel like the car is less than? God, it's gonna be. I'm gonna be racing the thing. I don't give a fuck if it was flooded and dried out 15 times. It, there's an end goal to this car, and it's to teach you about the untapped potential of Gen One Mustangs, in case you wanted to get into one. But I think there's a weird. Um, I want to say maybe two or three percent of people out there that watch me to literally hate on me. And you know who's one of them? Mike H. Remember Mike H. So one great feature I have on YouTube. 
as a uh, owner of the channel is I can click on your name and see every single comment you've ever said. And everything Mike H says is just like, stupid gay, why are you not saying stuff? Oh my God, junk, da 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 da. And I'm like, imagine living your life, watching someone you dislike, bringing out your Twitter fingers and having enough, I don't know, time and hating your heart to go, I hate you so much. So I'm going to comment on your channel that I watch in, in, like all the time and you suck. Fuck you. <laughs> like I'm blown away by people like that. It's the same reason why YouTubers who blow their cars up get more views. People want to see you fail. I'm reading my Camaro. I'm reading my Camaro now on HPT. Can I get a cheek pinch sound? I don't know what that means. Why can't people just enjoy the build process? Alex, I think the car was burned down and put back together. Hi, Alejandro. I have a question. I bought a 2012 GT with 50, 50 kilometers or 50,000 miles. Hey, Norm, a space between those? So is it 50 kilometers or 50,000 miles? I didn't know what changed. The Coyote tick popped up. What do, I, what do I do need to get rid of it? You get headers and a louder exhaust, and the sound will go away because you'll never hear it again. People love the idea and then hate. South Carolina is 110 in the summer, 90% humidity. A car that sits gets mold in places, blast dots, especially around the pine trees. Um... Darwin Gomez, can you look up my name? I'm just here for the Cavs. Uh, Mike H works less than 32 hours a week. He should start his own channel if he knows everything. Now, that's the other thing. What am I, what am I offering on my channel? I get it. I talk a lot of shit on this show, but I've never said anything, uh, let's just say, hateful, incorrect, or just, or, 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 or incorrect or hateful, meaning I haven't lied about anything. Everything I say on this channel comes with a lot of background and a lot of knowledge and a lot of, I want to say, experience in the Coyote game. So when I say something, typically I dot my dot my uh, I's and cross my T's because I want to make sure I don't get sued, this and this and that. So the people that dislike it are the people that are the liars and the ones that could be a focal point. And I'm watching you. I'm watching e everything you've said about me directly or indirectly, I got a folder full of shit. All I need is public call-outs. Call me out publicly. Y'all say, Alex, Alex, fuck you. Oh, you mean this? Th th this? Because I haven't mentioned a lot of people because I don't really have a, a axe to grind. But there are subtle jabs being thrown out there. And I'm like, don't throw subtle jabs. If I dislike you and I think you should be aired out, I'll do it. But if I don't really have anything to gain from that, that's hateful content. So there's no reason to do it. But trust me, I see the people that are trying to put out a little shade. And I'm like, dude, you might want to relax. If you live in a glass house, do not throw stones. So I'm blown away that people like Mike Age probably see me and they say, I'm a hater, I'm a hater, I'm a hater, I'm a hater. No, I'm trying to educate you guys. If you saw the build series, tell me what the build series brought up in terms of hateful content. I probably saved you guys... I probably saved 20 or 30 guys time, parts, labor by saying how to build an NA 10 second car, how to build a boosted eight second car, how to build this and this and that. So then the, in, in the same breath, they'll watch that video, use what I said in that video at their next car meet. But then when I post something about an S197, they're like, yeah, it's crashed. It's been burned. It's been hit. You suck. I'm like, wow, I'm blown away that you watch it that much. If you hate it that much, Block it out of your life. Like, you know, you know how many people I've blocked on Facebook, Instagram, and I don't hear about them at all? And the only time I hear about them is when someone sends me clips and I'm like, bro, I don't care. Like, get them out of my life. Street Alpha Podcast says, let them know, Alex. Hey, Street Alpha Podcast, when can we expect clips from our interview? Um, we talked for three hours at Street Alpha Podcast. And did I call anybody out? Did I go out of my way to say this guy sucks, that guy sucks, fuck this guy, fuck that guy? You'll see that video and it'll be like insanely knowledge-filled and professional because I have no extra ground against anybody. People are weird. Goofy and weird. Just showing some love. Thank you, Mike Jones. Alex has crossed the half, half the country because he believes in accountability and, not, and honesty. Alex crossed half the industry because he believes in accountability and honesty. Alex does live in a big condo, but the rooms are full of cabinets, receipts for the future. If you got a glass jaw, watch your mouth. <laughs> exactly. Yo, Street Alpha, when you drop in the Alex podcast. Yes, exactly. I want to know. Some low-key pocket watching by the folks. Yes. Like, 
imagine, imagine you watch this show every second and you know everything about the show. And then the moment somebody makes a dig at me online, you chime in with exactly the cars I have, exactly the time my shows are, exactly like quotes that I forgot about. And I'm like, oh my God, you're like a stand stand. You need to get a fucking life and stop selling mattresses. Like if you're a mattress salesman and you're talking shit on me, you need to really, really look in the mirror and kind of like reset a lot of the shit that you got going on in your life. Um, car looks good. I don't know what people are saying. I think just people like to fuck, fuck around and be like, oh, it's a flood car. No. Oh, it's a, it got hit. Like even Bryson Witt was out there saying, oh, I think that thing got hit. I'm like, what would make you type that? That's weird. Um, last night, a tuna saved my life with his file. <laughs> uh, Paul, <laughs> that's not it. Soon, can't wait, says Street Alpha. Have you been watching back, Street Alpha podcast, answer this question. Have you been watching back the interview that we did? And did you go, I missed that. Jesus, I, I, don't, I don't remember that because I don't remember half of the shit we talked about. We talked for almost three hours. And do you go, shit, which clips should I get? Because there's so many gems in that one. I mean, you, you could probably drop multiple clips that are decent but the problem with clips is this you need to get eyes on the clips so maybe you jump cut and add some like sound effects that makes it seem like i'm saying something controversial then when you watch the whole podcast you're like oh in context that's totally different um i share your videos to help out my friends but some of them misinterpret the advice epa hit lund epa on the chat makes sense now video of dumb hateful comments on your channel no i'm good because then you're giving them shine. Say talking that shit, Alex. F the haters. I'm okay with the haters. They motivate the shit on me. Been checking Street Alpha every day, waiting for it to drop. Sloth, the same place they've always been. Haters gonna hate. My S197 was in a flood. Everything still works perfectly. See, so these subtly saying, your car could have been in a flood if everything works fine. I'm not aware of, of, okay. Out of respect for Alex and paying the vendors, I won't shout it out. What are you talking about, EPA? They feed me their customers using the LRX now, the Gap Father inside job. <laughs> Oh my God, I'll just, I'll just let him, let, I'm not even going to ruin it for the guy. Uh, Wing says, I think people try to joke and talk shit on you, but some are 24-7 hateful with it and don't know when to stop. I'm okay with that. It's just goofy because, and again, I'm not saying it to be threatening, but in my face, I've seen them. I've seen them. We've been in the same place, same time. Nobody has ever gone up to me and go, I hate what the fuck you say. And I'm like, okay, tell me exactly what I said that you hate. Something that maybe was against you, something that I said that was incorrect, correct me on it. I'll make a public correction if I was incorrect. No, they just don't like the messenger. I just don't think they like a guy that was not, I have no tuning background. I have no computer knowledge. I work for Lund. Understand this. I work for Lund. It's no different than me working at Boeing. I work for Boeing, so Boeing is going to teach me how to build Boeing airplanes. And then someone at Northrop or someone at, ah, oh, fuck, what are the other, who else is around? Airbus says, Alex doesn't know how to build airplanes. I go, wait a minute. I'm working at Boeing and I work with Boeing parts. So I know how to build Boeing airplanes. And because you work at, because you worked at, uh, let's just say you worked at Airbus, Boeing, and you maybe, I don't know, grab some files from there, grab some files from there, and grab some files from there. And then you say you're better than when I've been at the same place the whole time, just, you know, honing my craft. It's super goofy and weird to say that I suck because you're basically saying Lund sucks. Because if Lund is teaching me and I'm using their files and you say I suck, then by, by guilty of association, that means Lund sucks. So I don't know how you can respect certain people and not other people if they're all under the same umbrella. Street Alpha Podcast says, a ton of clips. You always learn something when you rewatch, especially the editing process. Gotcha. Um, missed my question earlier. Alex, in your opinion, catch cans, does it matter if it's mounted above or below the engine? No. It depends on what style of the catch can. So a lot of people saw my last um, video on uh, the peasant chat. We talked about catch cans. And I said on my car, I'm going to have two cap cans open to atmosphere, route the lines all the way to the back, and just let it puff out the back so it doesn't fill the cabin up with shit. Because in my humble opinion, the recirculating style of catch can that's sealed, all it does is trap the fumes and maybe accumulates oil underneath. But I still don't think it does 
a good job of relieving the pressure in the crankcase. So if you have 20 PSI and you have blow by pressurizing the crankcase, well, now what I want to do mechanically is depressurize the crankcase. So if I depressurize the crankcase via exhausting the pressure out of an open catch can mounted behind the car, I would think my engine has a higher chance of surviving because now you don't have pressure building up in the crankcase. When you have sealed units and they're recirculating the crankcase pressure, I don't think you're doing a good enough job of relieving it. I think if you were to have a back pressure sensor, I'm sorry, a crank case pressure sensor on a sealed catch can unit, you would have more pressure than if you had one venting to atmosphere. And that's what I was trying to get at. That's all. And then people ask me basically repetitive questions. So, Alex, do you think I should install an open air element catch can? Or open air, yeah, venting to atmosphere? Did you watch my show? Yeah. Did you not understand what I was trying to say? Not really. I need to hear it from you. I did. I said it to everybody. Every race car, race car, ventilates to atmosphere. Every single one. The factory doesn't because it's an emissions thing. You cannot emit exa exhaust gases, basically, out the engine bay. It's got to go through a catalytic converter system. So I'm kind of blown away that when I explain that for an hour and a half, and then I get questions on my Instagram, Facebook, Patreon. So what do you think I should do? I'm like, in the whole video, I told you what to do. Like, I can't believe that I have to explain it again and again and again. It's like I have to hold someone's hand through the build process. And that's why I charge 15 bucks a month on Patreon. Because if I'm going to hold your hand, I better get paid. What's your thoughts on the S550 GT500 factory old catch can that returns into the old system? I just explained that. So would you, so would that be a catch can with a check valve or a can with a breather? No way you're fucking serious, right? There's no way you're fucking serious after I just explained that. There is no fucking way that this is the question you ask. Brandon, Horton, if you want to ventilate all of the crankcase pressure, would you have a sealed unit with a check valve? Or would you want one open to atmosphere? What the fuck does a check valve have to do with it? Why does it need a check valve anywhere if it's, it's a venting to atmosphere? It's venting to atmosphere. It's not returning back to the intake. Wow. Imagine this is what I go through in the tuning queue every freaking day. Hey, Alex, send me a tune for off-road ignitions codes in today's tuning environment. Well, I'm flowing more air, so can you please? Uh, the math sensor accounts for it. So every single time I see something in the tuning, in the tuning queue that says, hey, I'm going to put the headers on, you better, you better send me a tune. I go, really, what do I need to do? Explain to me like I'm a retard what I need to do in the tune. Like I heard something, I'm not even going to go into it. The knock sensor stuff today that I heard online blew my mind. How people don't understand how the knock sensors work. And they say that I'm misinforming people. That I'm misinforming people. Bro. Ironically enough, I use my air pump on my Windsor motor, pull a vacuum, and the motor kick out a breather filter. Um, Alex, having flashbacks to all the S's in the ticket system. Alex, new idea. Hybrid catch can mounted in the cabin, windows closed. It's sealed unit windows down to vent to atmosphere. Just kidding. You're trying to tube from the valve cover to the resonator deleter. How do I teach these kids? Come on, dude. You couldn't wait until Sunday to ask that effing question. What the hell is the matter with you? TNS197 says, I'm currently getting Luntun on my Paxson S197 and finally just want to let you know I'm one of those people that you save time and money on a cookie cutter setup for my build. Much appreciated. I appreciate that very much, sir. Look, half of us, half of us make $35,000 to $60,000 a year. At least 50% of the people on the chat make $35,000 to $50,000 a year. Your life probably sucks. Your wife's probably fat and ugly. Your kids, even though you love them, are fucking shitheads. And the only release you have is your car. You get in that sucker after work, you drive home, and it whistles, makes good pulls, you, you race someone, and that is your 
your solace, your, oh, my, my, my home away from home, what makes life worth living. My kids are shitheads. My wife doesn't suck my dick anymore. She cooks like shit and she's got a fupa. Okay, at least I have a Paxton S197. So those people are the ones I'm more talking to because that is their escape. That is everything. That is like their fucking whole life. There are people out there that their whole life is their car. And I totally understand that guy. I know that guy. He has nothing to live for except a fucking car. And he feels stuck. So guess what? If I saved you a month of research, not buying injectors three or four times, not listening to everything that the internet says, and then you were able to achieve your goal the first time because of this channel, I've done my job. I've done my job. Right, Sweet Alpha Podcast. You know people. Come on, man. Let's be real. Half of you guys are miserable at home. Half of you guys are not getting consistent, consistent dome. How many of you are getting consistent dome by your woman? You pay the bills. You're the, you're the man of the house. You run the show. She gives you dome at least four times a week. And not like, hey, you're, you're here, you're done. Boom, boom, done. No, enjoy it. Make love to it, okay? Because this light ain't paying itself, Okay? That car note ain't paying itself. I got to go to a shitty job. These kids don't appreciate shit. And you better give me that sloppy toppy at least three to four times a week. And you don't get it. So your Paxton S197 is your escape. Every night, my ass. You lie, motherfucker. Um, my girl is hot, but I make more than 60K. My girl is hot, but I make more than 60K. Uh, that'll be clipped on IG before the live is over. Send me a Cats Can tune, please. I have an 03 Cobra making 500 wheel horsepower. What size tires should I run? <clears throat> no wings. I just came back and missed half of what it got said. Miss Heard has asked something dumb. Live and learn. Okay, he's good. Now I feel called out, says Travis. Uh, <laughs> crying alone now, says aggressively average. <laughs> Single and zero dome. I'm there with you. Bro, all I do is fuck with my cars. And I'm not going to waste a fucking time, a second of my life on someone that isn't down for the cause. Uh, Speed Tree says, my boyfriend <laughs> domes me every night. Just <laughs> Guys, I don't know where this is coming from, this whole, this whole crazy shit. <laughs> but it's funny. It's funny to see, but I have no inside knowledge on that situation. But it is funny to watch. So, I mean, the, the, the best thing I could do for people is, okay. There's, it's a double-edged sword. I work for Lund, so obviously everything I tell you is coming from the experience at Lund. And I also have to make sure that I don't put them in a negative light when it comes to tuning. When it comes to companies talking shit on a product that make it us look bad because we're going to have to hold the bag. Like, do not believe 800 horsepower on pump gas on a catted car. I'm sorry. Because if and when it becomes tunable, we're going to hold the bag and parts companies don't care. Part companies after the part sells, bye-bye, see you later. They don't give a fuck about you anymore. They just want to make sure that you buy from them again. So they're not necessarily going to say, hey, let's have uh, you know support for the rest of our life for this Whipple or, or Paxton or Turbo Kit. Uh, my cars are my therapy. Uh, if I was Sophia, I would drop the car stuff for a week. If, I, if it was Sophia, would you drop the car stuff for a week? If I'd drop it forever. She's loaded. If Sophia Vergara wanted some of this bitch up, You'd never see me again. But she can't, be, she can't be making me sign a prenup. If you make that amount of money, drive a Civic until you get the money up. Uh, you got this, fellas. David Gonzalez says, I've learned a couple of things from this channel. One, car stuff. Two, hook up with nurses. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's just a thing. <coughs> I, I mean, there's a lot of nurses in Florida. Shout out to the guy who built the 10 already SF50 because his woman is ugly. Uh, okay. Are fat house cat chance any good in your opinion? Okay. The cat, the, 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 the fat house catch cans typically mount where the battery goes. So where are you going to put your battery? Go. Are you willing to relocate your battery? From what I see, they all mount in the battery tray. So, and they're venting to atmosphere. Isn't that crazy? Nuts. Hits a few one time for a million subs. Uh, parts companies don't care how long your car lives at a number. If your ship blows up, that's more parts they can sell. So when I worked at VMP, it's a parts company. And I'm also a tuner. So I remember the first... Sorry, my voice is shit. <clears throat> I apologize. So I remember one of the first times that I worked there, 
one of the first weeks that I were like the first second week, I had the phone ring. I'm slamming tunes. I'm like, wait a minute, why is the phone ringing? And this engineer, oh my god, he wanted me to teach him how to read data logs, and he wanted to explain tuning theories, and he wanted to, and I'm like, bro. You don't go to Shea Joseph or, or um, Ruth Chris and chat up the chef. How'd you marinate it? How long did you marinate it for? What temperature do you cook it at? Do you braise it before or after? How, how much? No. Give me money. Here's a tune. That's the process. So I quickly said to Justin, if you want me to tune efficiently, I can't be on the fucking phone. I'm sorry. I can't be on the fucking phone. So then what happens? People want to talk to me. Some of the guys talk and I'm like, oh, this guy's talking. Chris wants to talk. Travis wants to talk. BJ wants to talk. And I'm like, I'm not getting nothing done. But when I'm home Monday, I'm, when I'm home Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I slam tickets, bro. I'm, I'm rocking it. And I'm like, I need to be in a place where nobody bothers me in order to get my work done. And when, I, I'm, when I'm living in the system, so understand this, guys. This is what I'm getting at. It's not that I don't want to talk to you. I mean, that's kind of it. But I need to get, work efficiently. So if you say, Alex, what's next? I said, idle and slow revs, send. It's not that I'm being short with you. I'm being efficient with you because I'm not going to write a paragraph for an answer. What's next? Idle and slow revs. What's next? Watt 3,500 to 7,000 in third gear advanced trek off. You want me to go, hey man, how are you doing? Do me a favor. Can you? No, no, that's not going to happen. Fuck all that. Edry Rotana says, after owning a Hellcat Charger, two BMWs, their power bands are very similar. A lot of torque. I'm actually excited about a Dodge going with the twin turbo Hurricane and all wheel drive. The engine looks promising. Can't wait to see these tuners get their hands on it. Guys, that is going to be a winner in my opinion. I think the Hurricane is going to surprise a lot of people. Now, is it going to be a world beater? Probably not. But our twin turbo, um, let's just say, because we are V8 guys, right? So we, we fuck with EcoBoost, but it's a volume thing. A lot of people look at Lund Racing and they go, how come you guys don't fuck heavy with the 2.7 twin turbo EcoBoost F-150? Because most of them are rental trucks. How come you guys don't fuck heavy with the 3.5 Raptor stuff? Because most of them are limited. And then you can then put a downpipe, bigger injector. But then you're dealing with the 10R80, TCM, just dumb shit. Okay. Volume. How many Raptors are there compared to GT Mustangs or Coyote F-150s? Coyote F-150s are everywhere. I see almost as much Coyote F-150s. Uh, six, 15 to 23 or 22 that I do 11 through 23 Mustangs. So it's a volume thing. So we concentrate on that. I'm sure a BMW style tuner that understands, let's just say boost, power output, where to adjust on the tuning is better equipped to tune on a Hurricane than someone that tunes V8 stuff. So that's something that you're going to have to look at when it comes to choosing a tuner. What tuner has the most experience with twin turbo, straight six layout engines? So the Hellcat guys, I'm not going to look at first. You would think a BMW style tuner would grab one of these Hurricanes, does his magic based on his experience with the BMW stuff. That's the person I would trust the most with the Hurricane twin turbo stuff. Not the typical Dodge guy. So hopefully that gives you a kind of like a, a, a window into my thought process. I'm, I'm trying to hold back a sneeze. A window into my thought process as to who is going to come out above uh, or head and shoulders above the rest when it comes to the hurricane stuff. Raptor guys are the worst also. They are. They're gay. All, all of them. Short and sweet. How else is Alex going to get through 80 tickets a day? Exactly. Got my fuel system for my Whipple Gen 3 Coyote. Ready to go 85. Excited to make some power. Don't bother men while they're working. Especially if you want quality work. Who pissed off Ford with the GTD makes Mustang... Who pissed off Ford with the GTD makes Mustang superior? Brian, let me ask you. What part 
on the GTD is made by Ford. Go ahead. Tell me what part of the GTD is made by Ford. I'm going to put you on game. Um, yeah, one of the things that's disappointing is that Ford missed the mark on the F-150 Raptor R in terms of horsepower compared to the Ram TRX. Now we're talking about tunable or not tunable. Remember when I said that the Raptor R is going to be a fucking dud? And stock for stock, yes, while it's either line on line or quicker than the Raptor, you can tune the Raptor. Can't tune the fucking new Raptor R. And I told you guys that a long time ago. Right, the motor. The only thing Ford makes on the GTD is the motor. Transmission, Tremec, body and everything else, Multimatic. It is not a Ford. It is a Multimatic uh, GT style car that with a Ford motor, then a, then it, they basically slapped the Ford badge on it. So relax with this G. You guys are giving the Cobra Jet argument. Remember the Cobra Jet argument? Remember how cook assholes were telling you that the Cobra Jet is the pinnacle of Ford performance? And I go, excuse me? The Watson Racing built Cobra Jet that doesn't have a VIN number? That one? That one. People would say, Dodge Demon, Shelby GT500. Then they go, what about the Shelby 1000? Not made by Ford. What about the Cobra Jet? Not made by Ford. Stop it. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. God damn it, dude. Why the fuck do I sneeze at night? And I'm fine most of the day. I don't get it. And I'm like pilled up. Pilled up to the max. Like I got 30 Benadryl in me. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I don't get it. I'm fine all day. And then it happens at night. And people say, yeah, maybe it's your HVAC. I don't fucking know. I fucking hate it. I'm going to just get, I'm just going to take a whole bottle of Benadryl and go to sleep forever. Fuck all this. Um, Thomas says, I'll take a twin turbo Huracan over a GTD. When Demons are out and had Vins and built by Dodge. Exactly. If Ford came out with a boosted 5.2 Mustang to compete with the Demon, it would make it superior, not the GTD. Uh, the missed opportunities of a drag pack. But again, Jim, Jim Farley gives you like the craziest, I don't know if he's, has dual personalities or something, but one day he'll tell you how EV's the future. The next day he'll say, we're going to make street legal race cars. I go, well, you can't have both. You can't convince your board and investors that the company direction is EV. And that's where you're going. And that's all you're going to do. And then in the next breath, in a press conference, say, I want to do what Porsche is doing and build race cars for the street. That, that's why no one takes Jim Farley seriously at all. It's the air in your place. Yeah, no shit. <clears throat> you're allergic to stupidity. You're allergic to bullshit from the chat. Bro, this pollen is serious at this year. I've had a cough, cough, sore throat, and sneezing for what it seems like a month. Bless you, by the way. Thank you. I'm going to sneeze way more. Like, I, I've had, I used to sneeze twice, like, in a row. Now it's, like, 10. And I'm like, I don't know what the fuck's happening. I wear masks when I'm outside. Helps with the damn allergy. I just don't know. I don't know if Jim Farley has on-site dementia, but he seems to be wishy-washy about everything. Yes, I've replaced the filter, like, every month. It's not the filter. Motorsports Geek said, do you measure crankcase pressure with the increased volume of catch cans? No. Oh, my God. <sighs> You're allergic to all the BS the people are saying. <laughs> exactly. There's going to be a class action lawsuit against Dodge from all the people who bought last call ice chargers and challengers bamboos with the buyers. I, they didn't. No, they didn't. How? Cray, how did they bamboos the buyers? They said last call for V8. That's what they got. What's the, tell me what the basis for the clash action lawsuit is. Everyone knew the straight six twin turbo was coming. Nobody was bamboozled. Everyone knew that the V8 was going away. Everyone that bought the last call V8s wants to keep it as a maybe, you know, um, a collector car or something because it's the last hurrah. That they, 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 no, nobody got bamboozled. So stop it with the class action lawsuits. Like I think the MT82 class action lawsuit is so fucking stupid. It's so stupid. You guys don't know how to drive. 
I would understand if you're driving your car and you just gingerly put it in gear. Uh, 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 boom! And it explodes. And you go, oh, shit. What happened? Well, the transmission exploded while I was driving normally and I got it on video. And then like 10,000 of those happened. I would totally understand a class action lawsuit that way. But you dumb motherfuckers are power shifting it. Who the fuck told you power shifting makes the car go quicker in the quarter mile? Please tell me who the fuck told you that. On what planet did no lift shifting gain you mile per hour or time when just by breathing on the clutch, I'm sorry, breathing on the throttle a hair unloads the engine, but boom, get the shift in, get it in the next gear as quick as possible. You dumb motherfuckers, leave it to the wood, slam it in gear, the clutch doesn't want to disengage, so you're ramming it into gear, wearing out synchros, wearing out gears, wearing out the lever, the, the linkage system. Now your linkage system is sloppy. Now your synchros are worn out. Now your clutch pressure plate's fucked. And then in uh, 5,000 miles, you've destroyed the transmission. It is your fault the transmission's breaking. It's not Ford's fault. It's your fault. There's a guy here in my complex that we tune. I hear his car all the time on the limiter. He leaves. Brum, brum, brum. I'm like, who the fuck are you racing? Who the fuck are you racing? You're just going to go to Dunkin' Donuts, dude. Drive like a normal fucking person. And the car won't break. It's that easy. My NT82 lasted me 84,000 miles. It lasted me 115,000 miles. I have an SI50 bullet. I don't give a fuck about it. Just my opinion, boys. Okay. Uh, the only class action lawsuit about that should happen is against the 10R80. I agree. The 10R80 is a transmission that I can totally see them doing a class action lawsuit on. The 10R80 stock fucks up. Skips a gear. You give me the 10th gear, it'll drop down to first. You see the gear indicators like 10, 1, 10, 1, 10, 9, 8, 1, 10. While I was towing. I, went, I was going 70 miles an hour cruise control. I'm like, what the hell happened? Why is it doing this? And it did it stock. Stock. With a tune, it actually helps it. But eventually, it's just going to give up. And I think that one should have a class action lawsuit all day long. GM, when they introduced the knowledge shift, their cars were starting with the C60, ironically. Didn't you break a shift fork while not power shifting? No, I power shifted that. I mean, no. The clutch did not disengage. Okay, what happened with that one is... I quick shifted, but the clutch never, the pressure plate never allowed to unload the drivetrain. And I shoved it in gear and I broke the fork. So that one broke, and that is a fork issue. There, there was a fork recall on early 18 Mustangs. And on 19, I never broke that MT82. And I shifted it just as hard. The lawsuit is over the Demon 170 top speed. Initially, Dodge said the Demon 170 would put out 215, but the people found out that it's governed to 149. Alex, what's up with this guy, Rob Shoemaker? I don't know. I, don't, I haven't heard anything. And he, I, if my name got called out, that's one thing. But if he's talking on other stuff, he's allowed to talk whatever he wants to talk. I literally don't care. Uh, and yeah, this year's 60th anniversary Mustang, blah, blah, blah. No lift shift grenaded the MT82 talk shit in Facebook that they suck. The 6R80 is a good transmission. I towed heavy, solid, 40,000 miles with my 14 EcoBoost F150. I'm telling you. And I told the Alpha Street Alpha podcast, um, gun to my head, 6R80. If you're going to run these modern overdrive classes, so out of all of the transmissions that come in stock vehicles. I think the 10R80 in Camaros and the 6R80 in Mustangs are gonna be the ones that come out on top. Alec Bledsoe tunes the ZL1 that he's got and he's been 820s on a stock transmission. That tells you that that transmission has the ability to be built enough to go 820s in a fairly heavy car with a lot of torque. The 6R80, has been 6.7. So that says everything you need to know about the 6R80. Oh, come on, Bright Navarro. What the fuck is this, man? Mine has a neutral twice and flares on fourth cold. 10R80 is good, but due to the CDF... Here we go. He, this, guy, this, guy wants to, this guy wants to tell you exactly what's happening. I'm good. Um, 
Yeah, not me, because I don't I don't blast people that don't deserve it. If he's going around blasting somebody, he's saying that he didn't say he didn't mention my name. But name somebody I blasted that did not deserve blasting. Go. Name somebody I blasted that did not deserve it. They were just they didn't do anything stupid. They didn't talk shit on Lund. They didn't make Lund look bad. Meaning they were just hanging out in a corner somewhere. And I go, that guy in the corner over there, fuck him. And this is why. No, every single person I've spoken against has done something either to me or in the industry for me to air out as something negative. Never have I ever gone at someone that has not, that has not deserved it. So, you know, it, it, I'd love for them to give me an example of somebody that I blasted that did not deserve blasting. I mean, crickets. I think Tony's out there playing. I got me a 14 5 volt manual premium 23,000 miles like a month ago for $27,000. I hope it was a good deal. Wow, 20, that, sound, that sounds way too good. A 14 5 volt manual with 23,000 miles? That's really, really good. Turvy for sure. Yeah, Tony Full Bolton. Nutso, exactly. Nutso and Tony Full Bolton didn't deserve it. I was going to say Turvy, exactly. You picked on Turvy, the actual retard. Uh, yeah, that one's easy. That one's easy because he did shit against me. Now, was it indirect? Yes. Was the source suspect? Yes. But then they self-snitched. And I went, oh. So I said you did this and you verified you said that. Like, why does my name come out of anybody's mouth when you're accused of something? Imagine that. I'll give an example. Let's say, because I am who I am, I can get away with certain things. Obviously, I have a pretty popular show, but I established this way before I even tuned. Not the show, but the channel. So, obviously, I'm going to get a little leeway. Obviously, I'm going to get um, favoritism, right? So, when, let's say, someone in the industry does something, gets called on it, and then they say, but Alex? I go, wait a minute. Why am I the focal point and the, and the, let's say, scapegoat for what you're accused of doing. Like if you're accused of doing something fucked up and then you go, but Alex, I go, wait a minute, what did Alex do that, he, that was fucked up? Like hey, show me anywhere where I blatantly fucked up on something because I live my life pretty damn good. I live my life like honorable. I hang out with good people. I don't steal. I have never stolen. I'm one of those guys that's like straight and narrow. And I know the difference between right and wrong. So if someone says, you suck, okay, why? Well, you called out lethal. Well, they did something that I think was stupid. Well, you called out VMP. Well, they did something that I think was stupid. And I'm just trying to give you a heads up that if you want those results, I don't think you're going to get those results unless you do exactly what they did. So tell me again what I did that was so wrong. And they can't. They go, oh, man. Meanwhile, legit crooks and thieves get away with murder. I don't see, I don't say, but what about him? No. Um, Turvey made bad decisions, had the opportunity to get a free car and rejected it. Even had a job opportunity. He deserved it. Exactly. Turvey was working at a Waffle House. We joke, but I think he was working like at a Waffle House. And he, through this chat, was offered a brand, no, brand new a running working car that was convertible. He just had to go pick it up in Louisiana. He's like, no, fuck that. The parts farm offered him a job, somewhere to live, good pay, access to a dyno. He said, fuck that. I, I, I'm sorry. Someone tried to give Turvey a running car and parts farm was going to give him a job. Exactly. How much horsepower? Are 1050X good for on the 85? Uh, 15 or 16 PSI, depending on the boost that you're using. If it's a if it's a supercharger, a little less because it's basically drawing power to make power. So um, I want to say 14 to 15 PSI, close to like 900 wheel, and it's pretty good. What are your thoughts on the F-150 tuning after the LRX? Pun daily driver to get home to the FUPA. I don't like regular cab F-150s. I think they drive like shit. Quad cab or whatever they call it, um, super crew. Very good. But it's just big and heavy. People will always try to find the scapegoats to try to justify their own stupidity and failures. I think every time someone mentions me on anything, it's projecting. 
a lot of people have a guilty conscience out there, especially in the aftermarket. And what they do is they they go after the most vocal voice against their actions. So if you're stealing and a piece of shit, you will take offense to me saying people that steal and are a piece of shit that you know you will feel a certain type of way because you're saying he's talking about me. Right. So if you steal and you're a piece of shit, you should feel bad if I say people that steal are a pieces of shit are bad people. Like, of course you're projecting. So you're going to lash out because I'm basically saying people like you are no good. Um, I turned on better jobs to stay at Waffle House. Wait, is that a deal? Is that deal still available? I'll work for parts and the parts house. Um, just start you off for Turvey, his wife. <laughs> I don't know, Duncan. I don't know. I don't know who you are, but you're, you're some of the pretty funny stuff. A free car, house, and good-paying job is crazy. Why did <laughs> Why did Justin at VMP admit to running Octane Booster on the Rev and Evan video, but not anywhere else? That's a question you're gonna have to ask Justin Starkey. I think I think it would be so refreshing if a parts company that is pushing a product would be honest with their customers and say. We do not recommend you running pump gas on anything over 10 PSI with cats because the octane level is not there to support that boost level, especially with stock catalytic converters. That will melt. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And then they would say in the next sentence, if you want to get after it on a track day, throw a can of double shot boosting. And now you can run 12 PSI with a free flow and exhaust refreshing oh shit he gave me great advice i don't know why parts companies don't do that because it's honest talk look at gail banks gail banks is doing a great job of calling out people that are bullshitting now let's say you're a company that's a direct uh, you're, you're in his line uh, line of sight he's taking aim at you jlt and stuff like that where he calls out the company's practices and then he gives you a scientific reasoning why he thinks the way he does and, and the, he has more resources than i do people like that would kick and scream because they are projecting that what they're doing is deemed wrong by an authority in the business gail banks just like nick Pimas. remember nick Pimas? remember he had beef for jlt for a while and and Tucker was going in on him when Tucker owned the company. You copy my shield. He's like, okay, it's similar, yeah. He goes, fuck you. And he's like, why don't we have a shootout? And then another company stepped in and said, I'll do a shootout. And the P-Mask made more power. How do you think at the time JLT felt that his cold air intake lost by like three horsepower under the hood when I say P-Mask has the best data, period? So the problem is that he went and projected and started screaming and yelling and name calling and just got crazy. And PMS, Nick James did the right thing. He took the high road. He's like, you're right, whatever, you're right. Then somebody stepped in to do a test. PMS made more power, JLT was sold. VP would not install an 80 millimeter pulley unless I had long tubes Says John Bailey. John Bailey, with or without cats. Ah, interesting. Duncan wins comment of the week. Remember when parts house, houses used to say for racing only? You knew exactly what you were getting into. What's your opinion of buying used superchargers? KC, it, it all depends. KC, um, I think if you buy like a Roush unit, typically that's on cars that had warranty. Not a lot of people raced Roush TVSs. Whipple 2.9s, Whipple 4.5s like my crusher, um, Whipple 3.0s that have been raced and, and, and driven for 20, 30,000 miles. You want to get the best deal possible. Still, they make good power. You can rebuild them. But you want to get the best deal as possible. I wonder if JLT called Gail Banks boss. Oh, wait. Gail Banks is the boss. Banks is a military industrial complex vendor. The input is valid. They're overselling their blues after a couple of hundreds of units sold. And the real numbers come out. People won't want it. It's the only option. So I wonder how that'll go. So if you have a basis for your argument, you're the bad guy. Come on, guy. Come on. Right. I have a basis for why Lund Racing is the best tuner in the Ford game. 
And this is what people try to do. They say, you're not a Lund tuner. Then what the fuck am I? Like, what am I? If I'm not a Lund tuner and Lund as a company is the best tuning company. So do you try to put an asterisk next to it and say, everyone at Lund tunes great except Alex. So if that's the case, right? Lund sees what I do every day. John Lund gets up at, let's say right now, he'll log into the ticket system and he'll see what I did all day. And he'll open up the tune and he'll see what changes I made. He'll see how much timing I'm running. He'll see the customer comments. If there was a consistent complaint about my tuning abilities, Lund would have a side to side, you know, put me out on the side and go, yo, you need to do better. I see all these tunes. They're looking like shit. I'm not liking it. So get your act together, buddy, or you're going to be out the door. I literally get the opposite treatment, right? So that's not me saying it. And I get paid pretty well by Lund to not tune well. So every single time you say the following sentence, junior can tune, senior can tune, fuck everybody else. You're literally saying junior sucks, senior sucks because they taught everyone else under their banner badly. That's what you're saying. Um, uh, da, 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 da. What's your take on VMP gaining 40 wheel GT500 where, the, where they're the cold? I mean, again, I don't know what you're referencing. Um, Bill Nate says, caught the live finally. Uh, <laughs> stop. Look, I don't want to go after his, his family. It's crazy. Hopefully this isn't a dumb... How often do you recommend changing a supercharger oil in the 2.9 Whipple? Uh, don't they say like 10,000 miles? Honestly, if you can do it every like five to 7,000, I'd do it then. Every two or three oil changes in the car, depending on how hard you run it. The basis for why Lund is the best, Lund has Coyote World Records with, with a trans no one uses along with other records. Enough said. They don't want to hear that shit. People that want to rah-rah their guy especially people that hate me, will say, everyone at Lund, I'm cool with, except him. So he sucks. I work for Lund. All the customers that get tuned by me seem to not have an issue. Hey Alex, with Dodge's announcement today, do you think this will start a new horsepower war for the next generation of ice cars? No. No, Dr. Course. I think Ford is happy being the only V8. Once, hmm, that's a good question. Once the Dodges come out and run, and you start seeing really impressive numbers. Because let's be honest. From the factory, what's going to be quicker? A Dodge 550 horsepower twin turbo straight six or a dark horse? Right? So in 2024, unless they come out with a Cobra variant or another variant that makes more power, the quicker car of the big three is stock form is probably going to be the dodge that has the high output straight six twin turbo right so then ford's gonna go shit dodge has a winner what are we gonna do about that and then ford will have to respond instead of proactively coming out with models that dodge has to live up to now Dodge is coming out with models that Ford has to live up to again. So it might it might do what you said and uh, kick off a new horsepower war. DMP is trying to survive with this lockdown 2024. I have no issue with Starkey. I have always been cordial to one another. I wish him and his family success as EPA. There you go. Would you buy the new Dodge Charger if they perform good and can be tuned? Probably not unless the channel... If the channel gets to like 150,000 subs, which I don't think it will. Yeah, that means I'm making enough money that I can buy a fleet of cars. But... I need a garage. I have six cars right now. I got to get rid of the notch once it runs a nine. I got to get rid of the GT500 once it runs a uh, an eight. And then I'll be back down to three. Or four. Four. Any update on ESS and Valley situation? Yes. ESS and Valley got square. They're going to try a new belt and go from there. Uh, okay. Ford is always going to play catch up. The Ford accidentally dropped unlocked on Peter off a truck. I think Ford will come out with a hybrid V8. Before Turbo 6, Turvy taught Justin how to... Oh, my God. Did Ford 
Did Ford's going to have come out with a four-door V8 powered version? EPA got the PFP unlocked. Wonder how Dodge is setting up the suspension on those all-wheel drives. And hey, Alex, did you run the VIN? <laughs> of course I ran the VIN. Two owner, no accident. That's the reason I bought it. And I actually got a bunch of side reports that normally don't pop up on Carfax and the car is clean as hell. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you very much for hanging out with me for a little bit. We talked about the Dodge unveiling, Dodge unveiling four new cars, basically high output, low output, electric and gas versions, all wheel drive standard, 550 horse, high output, straight six twin turbo, five uh, high 400, um, normal output, standard output, uh, twin turbo, uh, hurricane motors, um, supposedly are going to be running in the low 12s or high 11s for the electric version, but they're all all wheel drive. They're all two door for now in 2025. They will come out with a four door. According to that video, we talked about people that project their hate on me. We talked about tuning. We talked about a little bit of everything. And we saw the dude in blues video where it was puffing out of the exhaust telling me there's a combustion event on that VMP car that wasn't happy. So again, guys, be leery of what people are selling you. If they're saying this car runs nines with pump gas in 93, those little puffs are telling you something. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys on uh, th Thursday. Man, sorry about my voice. I apologize. Hopefully, I'll be better by then, but I'm going to give you a show whether I'm fucking talking or not. Even if I have to sign language you a fucking show, I will get you a show. Have a good rest of your night, guys. I will see you guys on Thursday. See you later. Bye.